Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to talk about creating and exploring a new project. Now this series is geared towards both the ASP.NET MVC developer who's already uh, aware of MVC and may want just a quick little refresher on some of the basics, but it's really meant for the beginner who has never worked on an MVC application. But with that in mind, I still need to kind of point out to those people who have already worked in ASP.NET MVC some of the differences that they're going to find in this new ASP.NET Core. And that's because the differences are pretty significant and you really have to change the way that you think about the way a project is designed. So we'll start out by creating our new project and we'll see that the global.asax and the app start folder are gone. There's been a few additions to our projects, namely the global.json and the project.json files. We'll also discover that there's a new folder structure, including an SRC folder and a www root folder. Additionally, the web.config file has been moved and really doesn't do the same things that it has in the past. Then we'll go ahead and run the application and kind of take a little bit of a look, a, a glimpse at what the startup.cs file is doing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start up a new project. So here inside my Visual Studio window, I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. And under the web folder underneath Visual Studio C Sharp, I'm going to select ASP.NET Web Application. And let's go ahead and name this, I'm just going to call it Contoso. You're welcome to go ahead and call it whatever you'd like. And just take a quick note of where the location is of where we're creating this new project. So I'm going to take a look at that. And I actually have the folder already opened up here in my internet uh, in my Windows Explorer and then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now in the next dialog window we have these new ASP.NET 5 templates down here and we can select empty web API or web application. Now I'm going to go ahead and start out with an empty template so that we can show you a lot more of what's uh, happening in ASP.NET 5 or ASP.NET Core but you could select web API or web applications and you can see that underneath the description uh, that the web API template is a project template for creating RESTful HTTP services that can reach a broad range of clients, yada, yada, yada. You could of course learn more. And then there's also the web application, which is for creating basically a template for an MVC style application. So they still kind of have web API and web applications split up as far as templates go, but really the back end is identical between these two different types of projects. We'll see this a little bit more in action as we go through this series. But I should point out that under the web application template, you can change the authentication just like you could in previous versions of ASP.NET MVC. You could select that there is no authentication on this MVC application, or you can select individual user accounts, which is the more typical uh, forms-based type of login and user account management. There's also work and school accounts and Windows authentication so that uh, work and school accounts would be something more for Azure. And then Windows authentication is for intranet applications where you have a domain controller that is managing your user accounts and you want to integrate your web page or your new web application with your domain controller as its authentication mechanism. So I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to select empty. And I'm going to make sure host in the cloud is not checked. So some of you may want to just double check that, make sure it is not checked. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So one of the first things you'll notice when your project first loads is that you may get that restoring packages dialog that just kind of went away. And that is something that we'll talk a little bit about later when we're talking about dependencies. Uh, but just to understand, one of the nice things that they've really done with this new ASP.NET Core is that dependencies are automatically resolved and if there's an update and you say that you are allowing for updates it'll automatically go out to the web and grab the package download it and update it for you in your application so regardless of whoever loads up uh, the application whoever loads up this um, the project in their Visual Studio, it will automatically update to the latest package for them so that basically everybody is guaranteed to be, 
guaranteed to be working from the latest versions of those packages that you're willing to accept. Uh, so it's just one thing that just popped up there and I just wanted to mention here before we got, uh, before we got started. So the first thing you'll probably notice is that the Explorer window, the Solution Explorer window, looks a lot different. The layout of the project is completely different than what we've experienced in any previous versions of ASP.NET MVC. Now, if this is the first time that you've ever worked with ASP.NET MVC, don't worry, <laughs> I'm not going to go over and, and talk about all the differences, but I do need to point out from time to time uh, to those people who have used previous versions of MVC, uh, what those differences are, because it's probably going to be very confusing to those people. But for you newbies, this is all going to be like, oh, it's the first time I've learned it, so it's all going to make sense uh, right out from the box, right? <laughs> anyway, so the first thing that we're going to take a look at here is under the Solution Items folder, you'll notice now there's this global.json uh, JSON file. And this JSON file is JavaScript object notation. It's a file that contains various pieces of information that the solution is going to utilize in order to build the projects and build the application. And we can see that under projects, this item called projects, we have what's called an array. This is a array of JavaScript ob, uh, uh, items. One says SRC and another item says test. And this is essentially telling the solution that it can look under the SRC folder and the test folder to find where the projects are that are part of this solution. And you can see here's that SRC folder that is mentioned right here in quotation marks. Now underneath this SRC folder is our Contoso uh, project. But you will notice that the test folder is missing. And that's because if you wanted to build your unit testing, you would just simply go here to the solution, create a new folder, uh, and you would name this solution folder test, right? And you could put all of your unit tests underneath that. And when the project goes out to compile, uh, it will also look underneath the test folder. But we're not going to do that in this series. I'm just wanted, I just wanted to show you that you could add that folder. And by having it listed here, the solution would go out and look underneath that folder for your projects. So underneath the SRC folder, we now have this Contoso project. And we'll see that there is this www root folder underneath that. And inside of the www root folder, we can now finally find our web.config. So it's been moved from the root of the project to now underneath this new folder called www root. The www root folder is the actual root folder of your website. So any files that need to be included as part of your web application that you say you wanted to grab JavaScript files, uh, or any specific HTML uh, files, and you could put them underneath your WW root folder and you know put off different subfolders maybe underneath here, stick your HTML files underneath that, or create a JavaScripts folder and put all your JavaScripts underneath that. They all need to go underneath this WWW root folder because this is the actual root of your website. Additionally, if we take a look at the project JSON file now, we'll see similar to the global.json, we have our JavaScript object notation for different pieces of information that our project needs uh, in order to run. We can see things like the version of our project. We can see the dependencies for the project, which we'll talk about dependencies later on. There's also the special section called commands, which we'll discuss when we're uh, getting into entity framework, especially. And there's also frameworks. And this framework section is where we can see that the project is designed to work under either the .NET framework 4.51 or the DNX core five or .NET core five which it's really, I don't know why they still name it .NET Core 5. It should be probably .NET Core 1. I don't know if they're going to change that in the final release or not, since we're still working on a release candidate. Things are still kind of fluid. Uh, but you'll notice underneath this frameworks section, you can see the different .NET frameworks that this project is going to be designed underneath. There's also some excludes, mostly having to do with when you actually publish uh, your application. 
but you can see that the project.json file has all of the different settings for your project. Now when the application first starts, it's going to look inside of this startup file and we'll see this main method. So let's go ahead and start this and take a look and see what our web page looks like. I'm going to go ahead and click on IIS Express here and our application is going to load up and it's just simply going to say this hello world. Now where does that hello world come from? Well if we go back here to our startup.cs file we can see that there's this section this new method here called configure that takes a parameter of i application builder and on that app object it has this run async context await context response write async hello world and essentially what's going on here is that for every request that ever comes through this pipeline that this application ever gets right now it's designed to always respond with this hello world and we can test this out by simply doing something like this uh, let's go uh, my folder just for example and even though this is a folder that doesn't exist the response is still going to be the same hello world we'll get into the reasons for this and why this specific hello world is happening and it's always going to happen from within this configure method uh, coming up in the next set of videos but I just wanted you to understand that this new startup class is where the application has its first entry point here in this main uh, this main method and it's actually piping into this configure method as well as this configure services method which we will be talking about later on